Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're looking at the Word 2019 exam and we're looking at the third domain called Manage Tables and Lists. Overall, this accommodates for 15 to 20% of the overall exam. I'll go to throw up a graphic so you can look at this domain with me. In today's video, we're going to look at the subdomains Create Tables, Modify Tables, and Create and Modify Lists. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the third domain called Manage Tables and Lists. Overall, this accommodates for 15 to 20% of the overall exam. We're looking at the first subdomain called Create Tables. This subdomain says that we should be able to convert text to tables. If I scroll down in my document, I have this list right here. This text right here is just made up of words separated by tabs. If I select my information here. Notice I did not select the characters and I only selected my data. I didn't go a line below. I didn't go a line above. That's important because if you select too much, it's going to throw off your table. So with our information selected, we're going to go to the insert tab. We're in the tables group. I'm going to select the tables drop down. And I'm going to click on convert text to table. And that brings up this window. Notice that Word knows how many columns and rows that I need for this based upon my selection. We have some auto fit behavior. We can fit the column width automatically, or we have some other options like auto fit to contents or auto fit to window. And then we have the option to separate text. This data is separated by tabs and Word knew that, but I have other options. It could have been separated with commas or some other marking that I can specify. All of this information looks good, so I'm gonna click OK. And notice that my data has been made into a table. The next thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to convert tables to text. And so with our cursor in this table, we get the table tools design tab. I'm going to switch over to the layout tab. And over here in the data group, I'm going to click on convert to text. And when I do that, it's asking me how I want to break up this table. Tabs would be correct. That's going to put it back to where it was. So we'll click OK. And notice it removed the table formatting from this information. The last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to create tables by specifying rows and columns. My cursor is just below that information, and I'm going to go back to the Insert tab, and we're back in the Tables group. I'm going to click the Tables drop down. If I said I wanted five columns by three rows, you should note that columns run up and down, and rows run left to right. So five columns would be five by three. Again, columns run up and down and rows run left and right. And once I've made my selection, I can just click on that last cell. And notice it went ahead and it made me that table five columns by three rows. We're on the second subdomain called modify tables. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to carry out is to sort table data. If I put my cursor in this table, I get the table tools layout tab. So I'm going to click on the layout tab. And in our data group, I have the sort feature. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. What we're going to do is we're going to do a multi-level sort on this. We're going to do our first sort by whether the character is an adult or not, and then we're going to do it by the name. Down below, it says my list has, and it's saying header row or no header row. This data actually has a header row. So we're going to select header row. And then we can click this drop down and select adult. And we'll leave ascending for this first criteria that we have. After we've had the data sorted by whether the character is an adult or not, we're going to do it by name. So we'll click this drop down and select name. For this, let's change it up. We'll go ahead and do descending. You should note in this section that you can change it from text to some other categories. And here we're going to use paragraphs, but you should note that you can alter this section here. We'll go ahead and click OK. And notice it sorted it by adult and then by the name. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to configure cell margins and spacing. And we're also going to cover resizing tables, rows, and columns. Again, our cursor is in the table, so we have the table tools layout tab. And where we want to look is in the cell size. And there's a couple of key things in here. We have our auto fit options. If we select auto fit contents, watch what happens. Notice that it shrank our table down to fit the information in the cells. We also have auto fit window, 
and auto fit column width. If I wanted to add a specific height dimension or width dimension, I could do that. If I select my column here, I have the option of changing my height specifically. So maybe for this, I want 0.5. And notice we can see that the row height was adjusted. And I can also change my width for this. Maybe I want two. I can just key that in and hit enter and it will make those adjustments. And I can do that for all the rows and columns in this table. You also have distribute rows or distribute columns. Something that you should know is the cell size dialog launcher box. And that brings up the table properties window. And in this window, there's a lot of extra settings that you might not see on the ribbon. And if we click through them, we can see we have some alignment for the table. We have some text wrapping. For rows, you can specify the height like we did before, but we can do at least or exactly. Then we have some options here. Allow row to break across pages. We can repeat as header row at the top of each page. You have some column preferences. Then you have cell preferences. And then you have alt text in this section. So you want to be mindful of this alt text as well. we'll. Close out of this. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to merge into split cells. I'm going to go ahead and add a row to the top of this table. You can do that from the table tools layout tab in the rows and columns group. I have a tendency of right clicking and so I'll do that. And then if I go to the insert, I can select insert above. And what it did was it gave me a brand new row broken up into three cells. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a title to this row. So I'm going to select my three cells and then on the table tools layout tab in the merge group, I'm going to select merge cells. And now this becomes one cell. I'm going to go ahead and type in the title that's above characters and then click out of it. If I needed to split up a cell with my cursor in that cell, I would go back to the merge group and I would select split cells. And it's going to give me a dialog box asking how many columns, how many rows, and I can dictate how many I want there. We'll do two by one. That's fine. We'll click OK. And notice that this cell was now broken up into two cells instead of three. We're told that we need to be able to split tables. What we're going to do is we're going to split this table where the adults begin. And this is my first adult. So I'm going to put my cursor in this cell. We're on the table tools layout tab. We're in the merge group and we're going to select split table. And notice that that table has now been split into two different tables. And the last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to configure a repeating row header. So this currently is my row header. While this table is not too large, if I had continued adding characters from this book, this table would have gotten pretty long. And what I can do is I can configure my header to repeat on all of those pages. With my cursor in this row, I'm on the Table Tools Layout tab. We're in the Data group. And what I want to do is select Repeat Header Rows. And now that that's toggled, if this table got larger, that row header would repeat on every page. We're looking at the third subdomain, Create and Modify Lists. The first thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to format paragraphs as numbered or bulleted lists. For this, I want to go ahead and select this list here. And when I'm making this selection, I want to be careful not to choose the header on this list for characters. We're on the Home tab. We're in the Paragraph group. And if I wanted to apply bullets, all I would need to do is click Bullets here. And it's going to apply the bullet set. Same thing with numbers. I hit Control Z. With that selected, if I select the numbers, notice that it went ahead and it made that a numbered list. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to change bullet characters and number formats. So when I selected the numbers in the bullets, I just clicked on that icon and it went ahead and applied the default set. But if I click the drop down for either of them, I have other number sets that I can choose from. Maybe instead of the one, two, three, I want the ABC. And if I click that, notice that that list updated to have ABCD. Same thing with the bullets I have. Other bullet sets that I can choose from, maybe I like the check marks. Notice that went ahead and updated for that as well. This subdomain says that we should be able to define custom bullet characters and number formats. So I currently have my check marks, and if I put my cursor in front of this second name, Tinkerbell, if I hit tab on my keyboard, notice that it went ahead and it pushed over my name, but it also changed the bullet here, and it's actually A for numbering. And that's because of some of the selections that we made. 
but maybe I don't want that. I actually have the ability to change up how my list is formatted when I drop to another level. Let's undo everything that we've done recently so that we just have the list and we can look at that fresh. With that selected, if I click the drop down and select define new bullet, I have the ability to create a symbol. I can do a font, but what we're gonna do here is select picture. And you have the ability to bring in stuff from OneDrive and from the internet, but we're gonna select browse. In our folder, we have a picture for Peter Pan. We're gonna go ahead and select that and click insert. And notice it went ahead and it updated my bullet point to have a picture of Peter Pan. If I click OK, it's very faint, but there is a picture here. And if we select this, we can actually increase the size by just clicking the increase font size so that you can see it just a little bit better. Let's go ahead and remove this bullet because we're going to look at defining a number set. And you can also do this with your bullet so that when you hit the tab button and it moves to the next level, it will update as well. But we're going to look at numbers specifically. So if I click this button right here, this is the multi list section. And if we look here, it shows us how that multi list is going to break out. So for this default one, we have one to start. And if I hit enter, it'll go to two. But if I hit the tab or I increase my indent it's going to go to an a and then it's going to go to a lowercase i and we can see that breakdown each one of these has its own but we can define our own by clicking define new multi-level list currently we're on level one and this shows us what level one looks like it's just going to have a one period and then it's going to allow us to type in the text let's look at two for two it's a lowercase a if we don't like that we can select maybe an uppercase a we can go through this font section and look at some of the font settings. If we want to include our level one, we could. And of course, there's a more drop down, which gives you a lot more settings. And once you're done editing the second level, you can move on to the third. And let's go to this list right here and we'll click OK. So watch what happens when I hit tab after Tinkerbell. Notice that it pushed my list over and the number listed now is 1A. If I go to Captain Hook and I hit tab once, notice it's 1B. And if I hit tab again, notice it's just Roman numeral 1. Using the multi-level list can be a little bit complicated. I would encourage you to practice this so that way if you get a question like this on the exam, you're not really tripped up and you're not really fumbling around through the screens. This subdomain says that we should be able to increase and decrease list levels. Now we've been using the tab button and if we use shift tab, we can actually go backwards. So tab pushes it over, shift tab pushes it back to the left. If you go to the home tab and in the paragraph group, you also have the increase and decrease indent. So instead of using the keyboard shortcuts, you could use this. But I want to show you one other thing. If I said to make Captain Hook a level three indent, you might be asking yourself, how do I know which one's which? Well, if I click this drop down for multi-level, and if I highlight over here on change list level, I can actually select this one. And notice that as I hover, it says level three. And so when I click that, it pushes it over three steps. And I have that option for numbers and I have that for bullets. So you can do that with any of those. The subdomain tells us that we should be able to restart and continue list numbering. So let's go ahead and go to the end of this list and I'm gonna hit enter twice. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and type in a few more of these names, it's just repeat. Now that I've typed that list, if I select this and make this a new list, notice that it continued the numbering, but let's say I don't want that. If I select this right here, the number eight, it's just a little bit grayer, and then I right click. Notice I have the ability to restart at one, and if I do that, I get a brand new list. In Word, you could be on page three and click this numbering, and oftentimes it will pick up the numbering from a previous page. So on the exam, if you get a numbering question, it might be something along those lines. The last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to set start number values. So let's go back. We're going to select the one here in the second list, and I'm going to right click again. And from here, I'm going to select set numbering value. And then I have a few options. It says start new list, which we've already done. We can continue from the list above. So if you wanted to do that, that way you can. But down here, we can set our value. And let's say we're going to do a 100 and click OK. And notice here that the numbering starts at 100. 